Hi everyone, this is Kasia Zmokwa. Welcome to my channel where you will find photo editing training and educational videos to help you grow as an artist and photographer. What are we going to do today? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create color based masks in Capture One. In case of our image, we are going to use the color based masks to create depth in the image, to create dimension. So let's just take a quick look at original image. So this is our starting point. So on this image, we are going to apply a bit of basic color grading, some luminosity adjustments. So this is the original image. And let me just show you the step after applying color grading. So this is the result I have achieved after color grading the image. However, I wasn't really happy with the final result since I remember this place as super spacious, super beautiful. These distances were really, really large. However, here it sort of looks flat. It seems as from this place to those hills would be like 15 minutes walk and that's not true. So I was working towards creating stronger distinction between the foreground, between the rock visible here, between the middle plan and then I had the third plan, the last hill visible here. So again, if we take a look at the original image, we can see that this is the foreground. It has a little bit more light because we have the rocks. Then we have the middle plan that has the greens. And then we have those hills in the distant plan with those blues. So after applying color grading, this color sort of unified. I like the result. However, I'm lacking depth here. So as the next step, I have created three color based masks, one for the foreground, one for the middle plan, for the greens and the last one for the blues. So once I have done this, I was able to further manipulate with the image and create much more depth. So that's one way of using color based masks in landscape photography. Ready? Let's jump right into it. OK, so let's begin working on our image. I'm going to create a clone variant. And on this one, I'm just going to delete all the top layers. So I just want to have my retouch on the sky left because on the original image, I have a lot of dust on the lens. So we have plenty of these spots here and I have already cleaned the image. I don't want to do this again. I have just used the healing brush and healing layer to clean the sky. So this is my layer where I have cleaned the sky and I can show you if I switch on M. I have just removed all those spots here. I can see that I have applied film grain. So let's just reset this one as well. And let's just go back to our exposure tab. So this is my layer where I have cleaned the sky. And on the next layer, I have applied a gradient, the linear gradient to get back some detail in the sky. Without this layer, let me just switch off the preview of my mask. So here on this layer, I have worked with HDR adjustments just to get the sky a little bit darker to recover some detail in the sky. So this is my sky layer after adjustments. I have applied highlight at the negative 100 and white at negative 93. So we'll take this image as a basis and we will start from there. So let's switch off our browser. So we'll have a bit more space here. One tip that I have already gave you in many of my previous videos is to switch the background color of your working space in Capture One to white. You can do this very, very easily. Just right click here in the area and you can select any shade that you want. You can go for black with black in the background pictures look really amazing. However, when we are working on luminosity adjustments, when we are working on color, it is way more helpful to use white because now we can see that the image just looks darker. 
Okay, so let's begin with the first step. I'm going to apply a color grading to my image. So let's create new field adjustment layer and let's just simply uh, rename it to color. So on this layer, I will be working with color balance and maybe a little bit with color editor. So let's just jump over to my color tab. Let's make this panel a little bit bigger. So let's take color balance and let's maybe just open the color editor advanced. So as the very first step, I would like to apply a bit of desaturation over the whole image. So right now, those blues are a bit too saturated. They are a bit too distracting. They are really cold. I remember this image was taken during very warm, very sunny day, and simply this doesn't reflect the atmosphere. I remember very clearly the feeling of tracking over those hills. This image was taken near Tarnica in Bieszczady in Polish mountains. So I would like to just bring back that feeling and work with colors that are nearest to the atmosphere that I remember. So definitely I want to start with desaturating the image as the very first step. And then after muting down colors, I can have a look and decide which colors I want to work with, which one I want to completely replace with something else. So in my color editor, in the advanced tab, I'm just going to click on this little plus here. Okay, let's maybe pull it out so you will see what I'm doing here. So here, typically you would be working with the color picker, but I just want to click on this plus icon. So that way I have created a layer that consists all colors. And here I just want to go down with saturation. Let's do something like negative. 25. So the first impression is that the image got gray, but after looking at it for a few seconds, you will get used to it. And this is perfect starting point for working on color grading. So this is again before and after applying the negative saturation. So this is what we are going to do on our color editor. And now let's focus on our color balance tool. So let's begin with the master channel. I don't mind adding a little bit of color cast over the whole image. So let's go for warm tone. Let's go maybe for something between the yellow and oranges. So I think something like this will work well here. Let's now jump over to our shadows. And when it comes to the shadows, let's go for something between the blues and purples. I don't want to make those shadows super cold. I don't want to go for the blue tone. This will cool the image down further. Let's go for something a bit warmer. Next, I'm going to use the slider position to the right and modify luminosity. So I'm going to darken all the tones that are within the range of shadows. So basically, I'm darkening my shadows. So I have injected a little bit of color, a little bit of this tone between the blues and purples, and I have darkened my shadows. Let's maybe add a little bit more saturation here. And remember that in Capture One, you are working in a non-destructive way. So you can always get back here and fine tune those settings. Let's now jump over to mid-tone. And here I would like to push my mid-tones further towards the warm tones. So the mid-tones would be applied to all the tones that are visible here in those hills in the third plan. And moreover, those all those rocky formations here in the foreground. So let's go for warm tones, something between yellow and orange. I think something like this will be sufficient. And when it comes to manipulating with luminosity. Let's try to make the mid-tones darker as well. So this is my basic adjustments. I will create another layer where I will fine tune luminosity. So at this point, I'm working on colors. I'm looking at saturation of every hue that I add to the image and manipulating with luminosity is really, really helpful. 
And when it comes to my highlights, I want to maybe add just a notch of orange tone. I don't want to go too flat because my mid-tones are very similar to the highlights and I want to still maintain distinction between the mid-tones and highlights, but I want to warm them up just a notch. So to be super precise, you can operate with this slider here and reduce saturation if needed. And maybe let's go for a little bit more warmer tone. I mean, something nearer to yellow orange. Okay, so on this layer, we have performed the color grading with color balance tool. So this is before and after. Before we started working with color balance, we have applied negative saturation on all colors. So now let's take a look at our image and let's analyze it in terms of plants. So the original scene, the Poonin that I have captured, this is super, super spacious place. Those distances are really large and I just want to create more depth. I want to put the emphasis on those beautiful spaces. So right now I have the first plan, the foreground here. This is the rock formation that I was standing on. Then we have the second plan, the middle plan, let's say somewhere here. And then we have the third plan, which includes all those hills visible here in the distance. So this is my foreground, this is my middle plan, and this is my third plan, this is my background. So after applying the color grading, I would say that I really like the colors, I really like the shades. However, I must admit that this flattened the image. I like the feel, I like the atmosphere, the mood, but now, I need to work on creating stronger distinction between these three plans. So how can we go about this? If we would like to work with luminosity masks, this could be possible just to work on the foreground because we have those different luma values. We have the foreground way brighter than the rest, but that would include the foreground and the sky. However, the middle plan and the third plan, they are still sort of melted together. So before applying the color grading, we had the color distinction visible here. There is quite a strong difference in terms of hue between those greens and the blues. After applying color grading, this is simply gone. So now to create depth in this image, to add more dimension, I'm going to use my initial colors that were visible here in the original image, and I'm going to create three color-based masks, one for the foreground, one for the middle plan, and one for the background, and then work on these three masks, on these three layers individually, to create more depth, to add dimension to this image. This is very straightforward process, but not many of you are using colors to create masks in Capture One. But the technique is super simple and you should really know how to do this. You can apply this in every genre. I'm working here on a landscape image, but this can be helpful in any genre. You can use it in product or portrait photography, whatever you wish. Okay, so let's create our first color base layer for the foreground. So to do this, let's switch off the layer that contains our color grading. We will use it. We will be working with this layer further. But for the moment, we need to step back because we need access to our original colors that were present in the image. So on the background layer, let's just open our color editor. Let's just open this up and we can reduce color balance. We won't need it for the moment. And I'm going to be working on the background layer because after creating color selection, the layers will be created. Additionally, we will be creating extra layers here in the layer stack. So these layers will be created automatically, generated automatically by Capture One. Okay, so let's begin with our first color selection. So I'm going to start with the third plan, with the background. So let's click somewhere in these blues here. 
So I have sampled the color here. Let's now move over and click on this icon to include the whole saturation range for this color. And this is it. I'm happy with the color. Let's now enable this feature. So now this will show me what color is selected in the image. So anything that is not selected, not included in this color selection, this is grayed out. So I can further manipulate with this so I can work with smoothness. This will make the transition between the colors very smooth. Or if I go in the opposite direction, the transition will be harsh. So if I zoom in, you can take a look here. Let's just move this one to the right. You can take a look here. So if I go for higher value on smoothness, the transition gets more smooth, gets more harmonious here. If I go for the opposite direction, those transitions between the not selected range between those greens and the blues is more harsh. So let's go to the original setting. I'm just double clicking on the slider. So the default value here was 20. And let's now just try to include maybe a little bit more of green. So this will cover the heels. So to do this, let's just drag this edge of our selection. And if we go high up, this starts including the greens. So now I have covered both the third plan, the background and the middle plan. So this is way too much. I just want to reduce it and have only the blues included in my selection. So I believe something like this will work really well. So we can always get back here and fine tune or create new mask because this is really straightforward and very fast process. So once we have clicked and selected the color, now the next step is to just go over and click on these three little dots and click on create masked layer from selection. And this is really it. So Capture One calculated my mask and it created automatically the new layer here. So I'm just going to call it blue and maybe three for the background for the third plan. So here now, if I hit M, this will show me the mask that I have created. So this mask includes the blue color that I have selected on the background layer. So as you can see, this is really simple, really straightforward and really fast process. So in every situation when working with luminosity masks doesn't work, you can create your color based masks. OK, let's jump over to the background and let's create our second color based masks for the middle plan. So again, I need to pick my picker and click somewhere within the greens range. So let's go for a color here. And now I just want to check what is included in my color selection. First of all, always you need to click on this icon here. So this will include the whole saturation range. And then let's go for the preview. So now everything that is grayed out is not included in the selection. And all those greens that we have visible here are included. So I'm going to manipulate here a little bit more and let's include a little bit more of those greens. But let's be careful here and don't step too far in the foreground. OK, so I think something like this is perfect. So let's now switch off the preview and let's create new layer from the color selection. So I have clicked here and Capture One is automatically generating my new layer. Here we have it. It will be always positioned at the very top of your layer stack. So this one is for the middle plan and I will call it greens. And let's now move over again the last time to our background. And so let's create the last color sample. I'm going to click somewhere around here and let's now extend the full saturation range and I'm going to include a little bit more of the yellows. Let's switch on the preview. So all the tones that are included here in my selection are now visible here. Everything that is grayed out 
is not included in the selection. So I think this works pretty well. It covers all the hues that are in the foreground and I can work on this further on. So having my color selection ready, let's just click on the three dots and let's go for create mask layer from selection. So this will give me my last color base layer. So having my color range selected, let's just move over and create a new mask. So this will be the last mask and it will be positioned at the top of our layer stack. So let's just rename it to one for the foreground and let's call it yellow. Okay, so now we can take a look at the preview. So if I hit M, this is my mask for the foreground. This is my mask for the middle plan and this is my mask for the background for the blues. So if you want, you can be more precise here and you can fine tune the mask. So for example, it includes a little bit too much of those elements here, but you can fine tune this very, very quickly. You can just go for E for eraser and Let's maybe reduce the size a little bit and just get rid of those unwanted areas that were included in selection. But I think that the masks are super precise and we can take it from there. Another thing that you can do here, you can refine mask. So you can experiment with the feature here. If you right click on any layer that contains masks, you can go for refine masks and work with this. This will give you the possibility of refining the edge of the mask further. But for the sake of this video, I just want to focus on those masks that were already created. They are perfect for our purpose and there's no need to go deeper into these details. If you would like to explore this feature, simply let me know in the comments to this video so I will record another video. I don't want to make this one too long. And by the way, if you're getting value from my videos, I will be super happy if you leave me a like on the video, if you hit the bell icon and subscribe to my channel to support my work. So please do so. Okay, let's continue. So we have created our three masks and now we are ready to use those very masks to fine tune colors, to fine tune luminosity in these three plants. So this is now going to be really interesting. So let's begin with our third plan. So I'm going to jump over to the layer that is called three blue. Now let's switch on back our color grading. So we have our color grading back and now we can work only within the third plan because we have created our super, super precise mask. So when it comes to the background, to my third plan, I'm happy with the luminosity adjustments. I've been working already a bit on darkening the sky. So I have applied my linear gradient here to recover some detail. So definitely I don't want to mess up with these settings. I don't want to make further adjustments here with luminosity. So I will focus on color. I feel that maybe the sky is a little bit too dark, so I can now fine tune opacity values for this layer, but I don't want to make it too bright either. Okay, let's go for something like this. Let's go back to the blue layer and we will be working now with color balance tool. So when it comes to master, I'm not going to add any color cast to this layer. Let's jump over and let's take a look at our shadows. So when it comes to shadows range, it's not going to be very rich because the tones here in the third plan are more towards highlights and midtones. However, I'm just going to inject just a bit of blue and as a next step, I'm going to just make those shadows a little bit darker to add a little bit more definition. So if I quickly now switch this on and off, you can see that just with this very simple operation, just by cooling down the shadows, 
we have already started creating distinction between the middle plan and the third plan. Let's switch to the midtones and here in the midtones, let's see. And here in terms of color, I feel like injecting a bit of greenish cyan stone. So something not too cool. I don't want to get too close to my sky. I think something like this may work well. And let's go for just a bit more saturation. And let's see, in terms of luminosity, if I brighten up my midtones, this creates this very beautiful distinction. If I go the opposite way, this simply melts together the third plan, the background with the middle plan. So I will be definitely going in the opposite direction and I will brighten the midtones here. Let's now jump over and take a look at our highlights. So here, I don't know if I go for warmer tone, I think this will be a little bit too much. So I'm going to leave it as it was and I'm happy with the adjustments on the third plan. So this is before applying the adjustments on my mask and this is the after. And this is the preview of my mask. Okay, let's now move over and let's work now on the middle plan. So here I'm going to be working similarly as in case of the third plan, I will be working with color balance. Let's jump over to shadow. I don't want to apply any color cast here. So let's experiment here. So the third plan is in greens. I have injected a little bit of the cyanish greenish tone. So to create as strong distinction as I can between the third plan, between the background and my middle plan, I want to create both a luma contrast and color contrast. So to create color contrast, I need to use color that is opposite on the color wheel to the color that I have injected here. So we have the greens, we have cyans. So here the choice would be to go towards the opposite color on the color wheel. And this will be something between the purples and the reds. So let's do just that. Let's try. So if I inject the sort of reddish purplish tone in my shadows, you can see how strong distinction it creates between my middle plan and the third plan. Maybe this is a little bit too much in terms of saturation. So let's add luminosity adjustment on top of this. So now the in terms of luminosity, the third plan, the background and the middle plan are similar. Let's go darker. We went lighter on the third plan. So let's go darker on my middle plan. So again, this creates this very, very strong distinction here. And I think something like this is sufficient. I don't want to darken it too much either. But as a next step, I will be working on fine tuning my luminosity in the image so I can fine tune it further. So let's go for a little bit more saturation here. And let's go a little bit more towards the blues. Okay, so this is my middle plan. Let's now jump over to our foreground to our mask that contains our foreground. And let's see what we can do here. So first of all, I feel like I would like to get rid of those greens, I would like to warm up the foreground and push it more towards yellow colors. And the tool that is perfectly sufficient to do this is the skin tone tool inside the color editor. If I would be working with the advanced, this would be sort of shifting the selected color range, but I want to go for a little bit stronger effect. So let me just show you how we can do this. So let's move over to color editor, let's jump over inside the skin tone, and let's sample a color here. So I'm going to go for some of these tones inside the grass. Let's go for something like this. Here, let's include the whole saturation range and I'm going to be working towards color shift. Let's first see what is included in my selection. So let's enable this feature. So perfect, we are seeing all the colors that are visible here. 
So now we can start manipulating with this selection. So in terms of hue, let's see, let's go for stronger saturation so we can see what we are doing here with the hue. If I go towards the right, I'm adding more green. If I go towards the left, I'm adding more yellow. If you just take a look at these two samples here, the one to the left, this is the color that I sampled inside the image and the one to the right is, this is sampled after my adjustments. So if I go towards the right, I'm adding green, to the left, I'm adding yellow, and this is what I want. I want to create further distinction between those three plants, and I feel like warming it up, adding more yellow here will benefit the image. In terms of saturation, I want to go back where I was, so I just pushed it to the right to see stronger the color that I'm creating, but I don't want to add saturation to the hue in my image. And in terms of lightness, let's just go a bit towards the right to make this color a little bit lighter. And now let's start working with uniformity sliders. So if I go to the right, I'm unifying all the tones that were included in my selection, and this creates the result that I wanted. Basically, I'm getting rid of all the greenish tones, I'm pushing everything towards the hue that I have picked at the beginning. Another beautiful thing that you can do here is you can still reposition the point that you have picked at the beginning. So by now moving this point, I'm telling Capture One towards which hue it should push all the colors that are included here in this selection. So it sounds sort of complicated, but just look what is happening. So I want to push all the tones that were included in selection towards sort of yellowy, super saturated tone. So let's go for something like this. And next we can manipulate with saturation slider. So this will push, this will unify saturation across all the selected hues towards similar level. And now we can manipulate with the selection range itself. So if I want to include more greens, let's again take a look at the preview. If I want to include more greens, I can extend this selection. So this will spill out a little bit more towards the middle plan. Let's switch this off and let's see how this is affecting the image. I don't mind doing this, in fact. So, okay, let's extend the selection somewhere around here and let's see what happens here. Okay, so adding more. We don't have many reds. We don't have reds at all. Okay, so I think we can leave it somewhere around here. And I'm really happy with the result that I have achieved. So just take a look. If I switch off my last layer, the layer that consists the mask from my foreground, this is the image before. So there are too many of these random colors to harmonize them to create strong, very harmonious first plan foreground. I have applied this adjustment, so that way I got rid of those greens. They were not matching inside my color grading, and that way I have way stronger color distinction and luminosity distinction between my foreground, middle plan, and the third plan. So we've been working on color. Let's now focus on luminosity because the color looks good. However, in terms of luminosity, the image requires a little bit more work. One more thing I would like to apply here on my foreground is to add a little bit more structure because the foreground consists all these beautiful stones, all these beautiful rocks, and this will really benefit with some additional sharpness, some additional structure. So I'm just going to add a little bit more emphasis on those rocks by pushing a little bit of clarity. So let's jump over to the exposure tab and let's go for clarity. So here, let's see. So this is 25, this is before 
and after I think this is sufficient. Remember when you are working on clarity adjustments, always go for magnification level at 100. So right now you can't really see what you have done. And of course it depends on your final medium. But when you are working during your workflow, du during all the adjustments, always try to move over and apply it at at least 100% or if you are at the retina display go for 200 so you can precisely see all the adjustments that you have applied. Okay so this is our foreground let's now quickly create another adjustment layer and let's rename it let's call it luminosity and here to fine tune the luminosity levels we will be working with curve. So let's just hide the color editor. We don't need them for the moment. And let's go for our curve. Okay, here it is. Let's just pull it out. And I like making my curve as big as possible. It depends on the screen that I'm working on. Because the more precision I have here with the tool, the better results I can get, the more control I have. So I'm going to be working both with RGB and the Luma curve. So on my RGB, I'm just going to darken the midtones. So let's go for something like this. I'm just going to darken the highlights. And now let's jump over to my Luma curve and let's go in the opposite direction. So here I want to brighten my midtones. My highlights are getting too bright. So let's go down with this control point create something like this and let's now flatten the curve here in the part that consists my shadows. I want to keep my shadows deep and rich. So something like this. Let's go a little bit higher up here and let's flatten the curve in this part. Let's now jump back to my RGB. So here let's try to lift a little bit of the black point so we can create a bit of the matte effect. I think this one is making my dark shadows a bit too dark. Let's go for something like this. Okay, let's push it a little bit lower. So we want to have the rich shadows and let's maybe go back to a bit higher highlights. Okay, something like this. Now we can try to open the blacks with the HDR tool. So I'm going to my blacks slider here. And once I push it towards the right, I'm recovering some detail that was in those deep blacks. So again, this is before, this is the after. I feel that the midtones are still a little bit too dark. So let's try to brighten them a little bit with the Luma curve. So when I go for something like this, I'm adding light, I'm adding a little bit more air, but then I'm losing a bit of the color that is in the third plan. So to fine tune the luminosity adjustments, we could spend more time here, but I think the result we have achieved is already looking good. So in terms of luminosity adjustments, I'm very happy with the result I have achieved. Let's just take a quick preview. So this is before, this is the after. At this point, I might add just a little bit more of color that is visible in the foreground, in the first plan to the sky, because I don't like the way the sky is cut off. And I th feel that just adding a little bit, a hint of yellow will very nicely link the sky with the rest. Not too much, not too crazy, something very, very subtle. So on my sky layer, as we remember, I have the gradient layer applied here, the gradient mask with the color balance in the highlights. Let's just add a little bit of warmer tone, a little bit of yellow. And let's see. So this is, let's take a quick preview with old key. So this is before and this is the after. So this is something very, very small, very subtle, but I feel that it benefits the image a lot. So that way we are creating this beautiful link between the sky and the foreground. 
So I feel that we are done. The very last thing that I would like to add here is to just close the composition here from the bottom. We have this very beautiful, very dynamic leading lines and they are sort of taking the energy out of the image. So let's just close it with a little bit of vignette here at the bottom. So I'm just going to add one more field adjustment layer and let's rename it to vignette. So here I will be working with radial gradient and let's create quite a large vignette. So something like this. Let's see the preview. So okay, we need to invert this. So let's just quickly jump over here and click invert mask. Perfect. So here on my vignette, I want to let's just hit M to switch off the preview. I want to go down with brightness. So let's go for something around 20, 24, something like this. Nothing too strong. Let's make the transition a little bit smoother here. Let's pull it down and Let's make it higher up here. I don't want to darken the sky with this vignette. This is only going to be applied here at the bottom. So I have darkened the bottom part of the image a little bit of the side as well. I think it's a bit too much here. So let's make it wider and let's reposition it again. OK, let's see. This is before. This is the after. The transition is too wide. I want to limit it. I want to just have it at the bottom of the image. So again, this is before, this is the after. OK, now it's looking really good. Maybe a little bit too dark here. So let's push it downwards. Additionally, I would like to go a little bit lower with saturation. So this will help to keep the viewer's attention on the middle part of the image on colors. So let's just go very subtle, maybe something like negative 20. So now we are drawn inside the image with those dynamic leading lines. We are not stopping here on those rocks in the foreground. So this is the image without the vignette and this is the image after applying the vignette. So as the very last touch, I feel we could still add a little bit more structure to those rocks. So to do this, I'm just going to create new empty layer and super quickly just paint the mask. So let's go for B for the brush. Let's go for a bit bigger size, flow a bit lower, hardness zero and let's hit M. So we'll see the mask. So I just want to apply a little bit of structure, a little bit of sharpening to those rocks visible here. And I don't want to include the grass just to have stronger distinction between those sharp rocks, those sharp edges and the soft grass that is visible in the middle plan and here in the foreground. OK, so I think this is enough. Let's switch off the preview of the mask and let's add a little bit of structure here. So as I mentioned before, let's go for magnification at 100 percent. I'm on the retina display, so it will help to go even further. I think no, 100 is better because I can see all those rocks and let's just add structure. So something like this, I think, is more than enough. Let's go for 20. So this is before. Capture one is calculating. So this is before applying the structure on the rocks. And this is after. So the result is subtle, but definitely it is visible. Let's just rename this layer to structure. So we'll see what we've been doing here. So again, this is before the image is way softer. And now by adding structure only to these targeted areas in the image, we've been adding a little bit of sharpness. So that way we are creating even more depth in the image. We are creating more distinction between the foreground, those rocks in the foreground and those soft grasses, those soft hills that are rolling out here in the middle plan and in the third plan. 
So as a finishing step, I like adding a bit of film grain to my images. It doesn't matter on which layer you will do this because the film grain can be only applied to the background. So let's just jump over to the detail tab and here in the film grain, the image is very busy, very dynamic. So I feel that we need to go for harsh grain here. So let's go again for 100% magnification level. And let's take a look at the sky because the film grain simulation will be the strongest visible here in the sky. And let's go for something maybe around 20. Let's go for stronger. Now this is already too much. Something that nicely unifies those very clean areas in the image like the sky with the rest. So I think the film grain at 26 is looking beautiful. Okay, so this is before and this is the after. So this is the result we have achieved. Let's just jump over to the exposure tab and let's again take a look at all the steps that we have performed along the way. So, okay, this was done already and I have applied the linear gradient on the sky to recover some detail to unify the sky with the rest of the image. Next, we've been working on color grading with the color balance tool. So at this point, we haven't really been looking at luminosities. We've been more or less adjusting it because the color balance tool allows you to adjust luminosity for selected color ranges for selected hues. And once we have applied the color grading, we have been focusing on creating more depth in the image. We've been working on color based masks to create distinction between the foreground. So this is our mask for the foreground mask and the adjustments that we have performed. Then we've been working on our middle plan. So this is the mask for the middle plan and the adjustments and our third plan. So this is the mask and the adjustments. So after completing these three extra adjustments, we can say that the image looks really finished, that it was taken care of and that the distinctions are really nicely visible and the depth is really felt now in the image. So now the distance between the foreground, those rocks and those hills in the background can be really felt. So as the next step, we have been adjusting luminosity. So this helped to open up those mid-tones even further and to add more light to the image. Then we have closed the composition with just a bit of vignette that we have applied here to the foreground and we have added a little bit more structure. When it comes to the shadows, I think they are still quite too deep. So we can, of course, fine tune it. We can create another layer with a mask if we wanted to recover some detail. But overall, I think that it's looking really, really good. So I hope you will be using these techniques. I hope you will be working with color based masks in your own workflows when you're working on your own images. So if you like this video, I will be super happy if you leave me a thumbs up, if you subscribe to the channel. And I'm always super curious to hear your feedback. So I'd like to hear your comments on this video. And if you have any issues, if you have any techniques or tools that you would like to explore further in terms of working with Capture One, please leave me comment. And if I find that the subject is interesting, I will definitely make a video on it. And for those of you who would like to learn more about Capture One, I have a comprehensive course on Capture One. You can check the course description, you can check the course curriculum and you can take the preview version of the course. Link is available in the description to this video. So thank you very much for watching. This was Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes and I will see you soon in the very next video.